In this session, we are going to discuss about how do we communicate with SQL Server database by using Entity Framework Core in ASP.NET MVC Core. So, how what is Entity Framework Core? What are the features of Entity Framework Core when compared to its earlier versions? We already discussed. Now, in this session, we are going to learn about various approaches of uh, Entity Framework Core. Actually, in Entity Framework, we have three approaches code first, database first, and model first. Now, in Entity Framework Core, visually designing model through model first approach in designer is not available. We need to see how to use code first and uh, database first. So, in code first approach, we write all the domain classes and uh, entity framework will generate database according to the specifications. We are going to see how it can happen. For that, let us see how database is created, configured for our requirements. Now, in this, we are going to create a new project. I am selecting a new project. Here, ASP.NET Core Web Application and uh, next. In that entity code first demo. Create. Here, I am selecting web application with MVC, not configuring on HTTPS, then click on create. Now, in the application, first step is we have to install Entity Framework Core package for communicating with SQL Server database. So, let us go to Solution Explorer and uh, let us the dependencies resolve because you can see there is a warning icon. So, dependencies are not yet resolved. It is restoring all the packages. Let us wait until the packages are completely restored then we can add new packages into the repository. So, dependencies you can see a restore is completed if and uh, this dependencies the warning symbol is gone. Now, you can right click and manage NuGet packages. In this, you browse and uh, search for Entity Framework Core SQL Server Already in Entity Framework Core introduction, we discussed about various providers to communicate with different databases. So, select Entity Framework Core SQL Server Provider and uh, you make sure that you install the version which is suitable for your MVC Core. Actually, our MVC Core application is 2.2 and make sure that we select 2.2 of Entity Framework also. That means, our MVC core application framework is 2.2 and entity framework core is also 2.2. So, install this. Now, you can see the entity framework is uh, successfully installed. Yeah, once it is installed, you can see it is available in the installed packages. In the installed packages, you can observe Microsoft Entity Framework Core SQL Server is available. Once you install Entity Framework Core, now the first step is we need to define the connection string to communicate with the database. So, as we are using code first approach, here we will define a new database which never exists. For example, you can see in my SQL Server databases, in the databases, you can see we have some list of databases available here. We will try to create a database called products DB and you can see I will refresh my databases. There is no database called products DB. Let us create a database called products DB by using code first approach and add tables into the database. So, first we are defining the connection string. In MVC core, the connection string is defined in app settings.json. In app settings.json, 
you can configure the connection string here as a JSON syntax. So here you need a new property to be added by name connection strings. In connection strings, we need to add a connection string name as a property. Connection string name I will give as products connection that is the connection string name and we need to define the properties for the connection string. The properties for connection string, so we have data source, data source is uh, local and database, database is uh, sample db, sample db and user id, password as per my authentications I have inbuilt SQL Server authentication being used with user ID SA and password 123. So we are configuring the connection string con to connect with a database and we do not have any database called sample DB. Code first approach will generate the database according to your specifications. Okay, let us see connection string is ready and the name of the connection string is products connection. We have added the connection string in app settings.json. After configuring the connection string, we need to configure the connection string related services in the middleware settings. Where to configure the middleware settings? Go to startup.cs. In startup.cs, you have to import a library. So for Microsoft, Microsoft Entity Framework Core. This library will provide the settings which are used for communicating with the database. So now we need to configure the connection string in the middleware settings. You can see that the configuration related all properties are accessible by using a reference configuration and the services are defined in a services add services configure services method is there. Here we need to add a service. And uh, we will make sure that the services are added after this add MVC. After adding MVC, we have to add services. We need to add services. Services dot. We have to add DB context. We have to add DB context. And very important is this DB context should be using a context file which is responsible for handling communication with the database. So this will be an incomplete option initially. Let us comment this line. Why? Because we do not have a context. We need to define a context first. Let us create an empty context. So let us go to the models folder and add a new class and name this class as a products context context and uh, it must be a context to communicate with the database. So we are using Microsoft Entity Framework Core and uh, here we will inherit DB context. Now this context must be used in the middleware settings. So let us go to the middleware. Here first we need to import the models. So here we are importing the model. So using entity framework core first dot uh, models. So we can access the model classes here. Now in the configuration settings, it has to add DB context for products context. Products context, it has to add for products context. And uh, the products context requires options to be built and the options and the options dot options dot use SQL server options and what these SQL server options have to do is it has to get the connection string from the configuration settings that means we have to use configuration dot get connection string get connection string and the name of the connection string you need to configure the name of the connection string. And the connection string name is uh, products connection, 
products connection is the connection string name. So, that means now we have added a DB context which is using the products context and the products context is uh, now using SQL server configurations and accessing the connection string from uh, the connection string called products connection. Now, this connection string must be used by the context file. Let us go to the context. Here we have to use the connection string. Then we will create a constructor, products context constructor. This products context constructor is expecting a context of type products context by name options. And uh, what we have to do is actually it is expecting to use the db context options. That means we have to define here the option like uh, use db context options, db context options, which context options it has to use, products context and we need to access and store in a reference called options. Now, these options must be passed into the base class constructor. We will use a base and into that we will pass the options. We defined options into it. So, now context is ready to communicate with the database. Now, we need to create a model class. Let us add another model class for table. I am adding a new class. In the class, I am defining as a suppose category. Category is the class and this category class should map to a database table system dot component model data annotations dot schema and uh, we need system dot component model dot data annotations and it should map to a database table called uh, table called the TBL products or TBL categories categories and it should have the key property by name uh, public category ID it gets set here and uh, it is uh, integer type let us keep a category ID integer type and another string category name category name and get set ok. Now, this is the categories table and we want another table for product I will add another class and name it as product and it should use the same system component model data annotation schema and uh, using system dot component model dot uh, data annotations and it should map to a table called uh, TBL products and in this we need a field public int product id and get set and we need public string uh, name and get set and we need public decimal decimal nullable price get set and uh, we need a foreign key so for category so category it will be a foreign key now what we want here is uh, this category means category related category id will be used as a foreign key in the products now we need to set db set in the context context requires two db set public db set one is of category type and give the name as categories get set another db set public db set of uh, product type and uh, by name products and get set now, all the model classes and domain classes are ready to communicate with the database. Now, we need to generate the database and tables as per our domain specification. Then what we have to do is go to tools, package manager, package manager console. In package manager console, we have to just run the commands for entity framework. Here you need to define the command add migration add migration initial initial create this will add the migration related settings in your solution observe when i hit enter it is adding the migration related settings into the models that means uh, 
whatever the logic is required to create the database and tables, it will add the migration for that. And you can see once the migration is added successfully, you can observe here the migrations are defined in our application. We need to just define update, update database. Then it will connect with the database that you defined in the connection and it will create all the database tables that are required according to the domain specifications. And you can see all the migrations have been done and everything is ready. Let us go into the databases and uh, refresh the database. You can see there is a database called products DB and into the products DB it should have get all uh, we created as sample DB. In the sample DB you can see we have tables and the tables have categories and products with the keys that we have defined. Whatever the tables we have configured with keys and columns, it is generating everything according to the specifications. So these are all the options of uh, code first approach. Thank you.